guys welcome back to my channel thanks for joining me for another video um so today's video is yet another chilled out video to be really honest um i've been finding it a little bit of a challenge to balance youtube and my full-time job and my home life and you know making sure i spend enough time with my family and you know doing other things i like to do like baking and like yard work and like just domestic stuff I actually really really enjoy so um, it's been a little bit of a challenge so I came into this week not really having much of a plan except for somewhat of a to-do list of plant chores and I had a couple of garden centers I also wanted to go to so that's kind of what this week's video is is just like me taking you along with me doing stuff. So I went to a couple garden centers as I mentioned. My little uh, forgetty eye seedlings that I pollinated are starting to outgrow that little takeout container that I had it in. Actually they're not outgrowing it per se but the roots were becoming like one massive mass so rather than letting them get super tangled I needed to get them potted up in the seedling tray so I did that. Um, I also in my last video I was unpotting and cutting up my SP Columbia so I finally potted that up in this video and I also added this like air layer cup type of situation to it um, and then the last thing well actually the, the first thing you're gonna see in this video is so I wanted to experiment with a new style of moss pole um, and for the longest time I've been looking at my friend Terrence's poles, um, Plantstika on Instagram. So he has these like tree fern fiber poles that are mixed with like kind of aeroid soil amendments. And I think he has a highlight where he grew a majestic a bit. I don't know if it's in his highlights, so I might be wrong. But um, this style of pole I was really interested in. I just didn't have the materials to make a tree fern like or like a soil pole because the person I was planning to get the tree fern fiber from is out of stock. So I just went with normal moss but um, I got my mandula on a pole finally and then I it was my first time making a pole of this style. So it has the clear solid back, the flat front and I wanted to add kind of a self-watering element to it. So I've placed this cotton wick rope throughout the pole. It This is not going to be a how-to video. This is just me making this pole for the first time. Actually, I did it, I do it once in the video and I fail and then I try again. <laughs> so that's me um, trying it out for the first time and I'll be testing out how this like self-watering feature works. Um, last night though I stuck this rope into a cup of water. It took some time for that water to travel up to this part but as of now this moss at the very tippy top of the pole that was dry and crunchy last night is now damp. So fingers crossed that it does work. Um, I don't need this to be like wet. I just need it damp enough that I can go in and spray with fertilizer and that'll just readily absorb it. So yeah, I finally got this repotted on a pole. Hopefully I'll get large mandula leaves by spring, summer. Um, I also transferred it from pond into soil. As much as this mandula love my like my pond mixture that I use with perlite and orchiata, I didn't have a glass vessel that would fit all of this. So I was like, well, I'll just transfer it to pond. I did a little poll of my group chat. It was 50-50 split, I think, on who's growing in pond, who's growing in soil for mandula. So I took a chance. Hopefully it takes well to this substrate. So far, I actually quite like this poll and how it looks. It wasn't too difficult, but it is a little bit more labor than like a regular moss pole. But if I like it, it's going to be worth the effort. So yeah, um, that's pretty much today's video. And then going forward, I'm not always going to have videos that are like well planned out. I have a list of video ideas I want to do, but some of them require more planning, more staging, some materials or uh, research. 
and I just don't have the time to do that consistently. So if you're into these types of videos, let me know if you're not into these types of videos and you have other suggestions. I would love to hear it. And I hope that you enjoy just having a chill time. I highly suggest grabbing some of your own plant chores to do while you play this video because you know, it's not gonna be action packed or anything, but yeah. I think that is it for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, I don't have Huxley here with me today. Um, he's with my dad or his grandpa. He goes to see my dad every few weeks or so and he stays with him for a few days. They're just like, they're so cute together. They're like best friends. I don't even think Huxley sees my dad as like a human. <laughs> they're just like best buddies and they just run around together and then Huxley comes back exhausted and he's really cute and cuddly so yeah it's always fun and I can get some like housework done while he's gone so yeah no Huxley today um, and then the other thing is in the part of the video where I make this poll I am wearing like the wrinkliest t-shirt of all time and I swear it wasn't it didn't look wrinkly when I put it on um, and I also promise you that it is clean. I just didn't fold it properly when I uh, washed it. So yeah. Um, and the other thing is I'm taking a break right now from nail polish just to let my nails breathe and you know, go back to a normal color. So they do have that kind of nail polish stain color and I'm sure nobody gives a flying crap, but um, just thought I'd mention that and yes I think that is everything I wanted to say so I will meet you back here at the end enjoy the video come on let's go
my plant favorites of 2021. I showed my Manjula Pothos or my Epipremnum Aurea Manjula. So this is her. And I said I wanted to get her on a pole and grow the foliage really big this year. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm using one of my pots from Jing. It's gonna be in soil. I'm moving it from my pond mix to soil because I don't have a glass container that's big enough for the pole and the plant. So we're gonna do a transition today. And the um, pole that I'm gonna make is gonna have a clear rounded background that's solid with the mesh guard in front and obviously moss. I'm gonna have a bamboo stake in the middle and then this is the clear backing I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna put a picture of what I'm using right now. I'm gonna link in my description as well in case you want one, but this is the legal size, so 11 by 17, and it's like 10 mil thick. I'm not gonna use obviously the whole width of this. I'm only gonna cut it in half. I already have the, the mesh pre-cut. Um, and then I'm going to be adding a cotton rope down the back. So this is, uh, I'm gonna link this as well, but it's a six millimeter craft rope. So it's basically like a wick. So I'm gonna run that through the rope and have it hanging out the side so I can just like dunk that rope in water. And hopefully that will just wick water through the rope and I won't have to moisten my moss poles. Maybe this like cup can just like kind of hide behind the plant. If if I was using this in semi-hydro, I could just stick the rope straight into the reservoir, but I just have to like fill that reservoir more often. But since I'm transferring this plant to soil, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have the rope hanging out of the plant. Um, so yeah, so you're going to need the binding cover, mesh, some sort of stake, the wick if you want it, uh, zip ties. I got small black zip ties here. Scissors, obviously. And you're gonna need a single hole punch. And did I mention moss? That's pretty obvious. So the moss I'm using is actually mixed with coconut coir chunks. Is it coir if it's chunks? Coconut chunks. The reason why it's mixed in here is because I always have this like pot of like discarded moss always on the go. So I, when I dismantle a moss pole, if I like unpot a moss plant, I just kind of stick that in into like this big pot and then it just sits there until I need it again. And using it for poles is my main use for that. Um, to give that moss a second life. And then of course I have my soil for the plant. Okay, so let's get started. All right. All right, okay, so first I'm going to be cutting this backing down to size. So the backing's gonna be like a U shape behind the mesh, but I want to cut it a little bit wider than the mesh because I need to fold the sides in in order to attach this to the front. So I think cutting it in half should be fine. It's not straight at all. Hi. Come in. hard to see if I've cut it straight because it's transparent. I don't think this is straight though. Okay, well we're gonna try that. So I'm going to yeah, I'm going to fold the edge of this over so that the mesh has something to attach to. So it looks like 
this. Just fold it here. Okay, and the other side. Okay, so now if I curve it, let's see if this fits. that. I think that's okay. Okay, so to, to attach the mesh, I'm going to need to punch holes in this. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, I should. Okay. Uh, I think I'll just do one in the middle. And then I'll fill in the gaps. You'll probably do two in between. Okay, now which order should I do this in? Um, okay, now what do I want to do? Okay, I'm gonna zip tie one side and then do the other one after. So there's two sides to this mesh. One is where it's curved outwards and one where it's curved inwards. So I guess decide which side you want to use. I think I'm going to do it inward so it's like a little bit more concave and the plant can kind of be nestled in here. Um, I think that might work a little bit better. You know how like when you put a USB in? <laughs> no, I don't do like that. You know how like when you plug in a USB cord and it's always wrong the first try? <laughs> I feel that way about zip ties. I always put it in the wrong direction the first try. Okay, I'm just snaking that through the hole. I'm trying to give you an angle so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, it's in there. First one is in like so, and then I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, now that I'm looking at this, this is actually going to be a little bit of a flat pole. So if you look at it from the side here, it's not that thick. But I'm okay with that because I don't think it needs to be that packed with moss. And it's going to be self-watering, so I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to add some moss in. I'm just trying to decide how much to fill this hole. 
if I have the bamboo down here, I don't want to see it poking out above the moss. Because I don't have to fill them all the way to the top. But I think it would look nicer. I would have like this much, this much steak hanging out at the bottom. I'll fill it at least as high as the steak. So adding some moss in. Wait. Do I want this, the rope first? So here's what I'm thinking. I might need to do, I'm trying to get comfortable here. I might need to do the moss completely full because when I add in the rope, I want it all the way to the top. It's gonna be hard to add more rope later. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to fill it all the way up. So I'm gonna cut the rope about a foot longer than the actual pole. And I think I'll, I think I'm gonna put it in the middle where the, the bamboo would be. So I'm gonna add, keep adding a small layer of moss. I think um, having cocoa chunks in a moss pole is not bad because it just provides more aeration. You won't have root rot happening inside the pole if your pole is always wet and you have a higher chance of growing nice kind of like soil-like roots. Get that nice and even. Now, which side is going to be the top? That'll be the top there. So this is the top. This is the bottom. It's gonna fill out to the bottom here. We get the stake in and the rope as straight as I can make it. Are we liking this? I'm so unsure. And then this is where I'm gonna stick it into water. I think that might work. All right, we're going for it. Is that gonna close? I think that's gonna close. Okay, so we're gonna close it up now. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, straight off the bat, it's not a pretty pole. Um, from the side, it's super flat, it's not very straight. The thing that bugs me the most is that like the edge of the plastic comes out the side and the problem is that I didn't tie, well I didn't punch the hole close enough to the edge here. If I punch the hole a little bit closer to, to the where I folded, this would sit closer to, the mesh would sit closer to the edge and it would look a little bit cleaner. So we're starting over. Okay, we are back. I've recut another piece and this time I've made sure to punch the holes um, as close to the edge here as I can. I don't know if you can see that hole it's right, where, right there. So hopefully this time will look better. I've also decided that there's there was too much overhang here, so I've cut off a lot at the front so that the zip tie doesn't have to like go around so much plastic. Oh. 
Okay, here we go. Also, this time I'm going to be tying the zip tie one layer in and that should hold the edge of the mesh flush to the edge of the plastic here. side done. I'm liking this better I think. It's sitting flush to the edge and this side should look like that and I think it'll be a lot cleaner and it's gonna be a little thicker too. around so you can see. Stake goes in, wick goes in, more moss. Just checking how, a, how the density is distributed closing it up because there's like parts where it's really full and parts where it seems a bit empty. So I'm just going to even that out. I think I'm liking this. So we're going to go ahead and close it up. When I'm closing moss balls, I prefer to do one end and then the middle then the other side and then just like go in between. I think I find this holds it together a little bit easier while you're closing it up. Last one. Whew. Why is this one going in the opposite direction? There we go. These are all going the wrong direction. Good thing I noticed that before I cut it off. Alright, so that is the pole done, I think. Looks a lot better than that first one I made. And I have this much wick to work with. So that'll just be hanging out the side. If I need to, I can like, I don't know, what should I do? I could maybe like coil it around the back and clip it, but that can be easily hide it if I need to. Yeah, I'm okay with this. It's not like the most amazing pole ever, but I think it'll do the trick. And then obviously I will be using this wick and seeing if I run into any issues, if it's working properly. And then I might do an updated one. I want to do this poll a couple more times before I do like a proper how-to video. And that's if like, 
I think it's a good pull to continue using if I enjoy this type of bowl. So time to pot up the manjula. Okay, so I'm gonna fill a bit at the bottom. Well, it's now two days later. My camera cut out as I was plotting this up and um, I rage quit and just potted it up and then went to bed. And then a day passed and I was too exhausted yesterday to fin finish filming this video. So here we are. This is the final product. The Manjula in soil on the pole and it has plenty of space to grow up. The wick pretty much goes all the way to the top, or very close to the top here. So I will keep you guys updated on if this works or not, and if I want to make any tweaks to it, I will, and I'll film another video. And then the next um, chore that I wanted to tackle was long overdue, um, and that is getting my little forgetty I seedlings separated and potted up individually. So um, I will have shown the other day I went to Garden Works and I was looking for a plant actually, but there was nothing there that I wanted or the ones that were there that I liked were looking a little bit sad. So all I got were these little seedling trays. So it kind of comes in like this big tray like this and it just separates out into um, little six pot segments. So I think I should have 17 seedlings in here. I sowed 17 seeds and I'm pretty sure they all germinated. So I'm gonna just kind of like slowly pick through these, separate them, and then I have some freshly soaked moss here. I'm going to plant them in um, with some myco and I'm just going to play some soothing music and get to it. Oh, I brought these. I didn't buy them. I had these for my aquarium. I don't know if I'm going to use them, but yeah, I have these here with me.
actually way easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> and I counted 17, so that means all of the seeds were successfully germinated, which is great. Not that like these are like very valuable or, or anything, but they are very valuable to me because they are the first plants I've ever pollinated and germinated myself. So anyways, I'm going to get them into, I contemplated mixing in bark, but I was running a little low on Orchiata bark. What, what I mean is like I was going to mix Orchiata into the sphagnum moss, but I think what I'll do is I'll take some of the bark that was <clears throat> in the mixture they were growing in and just mix that into the little pots they're going to be in. And that's going to be it. So I'm going to keep doing that. Roll the music.
So here are the seedlings done. I forgot I had 17 and not 18, so that's why there's an empty spot here. Um, to be honest, the seedlings were actually bigger than I remembered them to be, so they are a pretty snug fit inside these um, containers. So I don't think they're gonna be living in here for too long, but the plus side of getting them in here is that they're now all in individual compartments, so when they outgrow these, then I can just like take them out one by one and just like plop them into a bigger pot with more substrate because I probably won't change it out of this substrate, It'd just be more um, mossy bark mix. And yeah, the only thing is I don't want to keep it in this size too long because um, even though they don't mind a nice snug fit in general, I think if it stays in here too long that that will definitely stunt their growth. So I'm thinking like a couple more leaves for each of these seedlings and then they're going to have to be upsized into individual like maybe three inch pots, something like that. So yeah, so that task is finally done. Um, this has been in that container, this one here for, oh, I don't know, six months or something like that. It's not a ton of growth for that length of time. Um, I will say this one is probably like my biggest one right now um, and is yet to show any of like the forgetii, like venation and characteristics. It is starting to come out a little bit, but yeah, we will see. I will update you guys if and when anything new happens with these. All right, on to the next task. All right, so if you watched my last video, which was my wishlist video, um, I was unpotting my SB Columbia out of moss and I cut it and I only just got the top cutting potted in my pond mix. So, ooh. so yeah, there were just some aerial roots and I didn't need very big of a container. Um, it's potted above this water line and I kind of like tied the petioles together so it won't be as splayed out so I can have, um, so it'll be easier to find a spot for it in better light. And then we're gonna try to get this like curl back situation figured out. And I think it might be a light thing. So yeah, I think um, I'm gonna grow it next to my Gloriosum if I can and see if it likes that situation better. And then I thought I'd pot up the bottom cutting, which um, is rooted into the same mixture, but I wanted to show you um, how I would air layer this because remember, if you saw that video, I was planning to air layer this top section of the plant here, get its own root system going and then cut down here and then grow this separately. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, where's my mic go? So I already have the substrate here. It's all mixed up and freshly rinsed. That is actually more perlite heavy than I normally go, but um, I was too lazy to open up a new bag of ponds. So this is, maybe it's 50% perlite, 25% orchiata, 25% pond, something like that. So way more perlite heavy than normal. You, normally I would go kind of like equal parts of both or of all three and I really rinse it quite well because I don't want to see that sediment at the bottom of my reservoirs but even though Lechuza tells you not to rinse it I rinse it anyway and they say that because they don't want you to rinse out all the nutrients from the slow release fertilizer they use which it's either Osmocote or something similar to Osmocote, but um, I don't really care about that. So I have my go and I'm just gonna sprinkle it generously over the roots. And by generously, I mean <laughs> sparingly. Um, I don't wanna go too heavy on it, but actually I think um, I'm starting to use my go a little bit more generously than I used to just because I'm concerned that I'm not going through it quickly enough. So yeah, it's all over the roots now. 
this substrate is quite damp. And typically, I would um, get a little bit of water in there first before I put the myco and pot the plant up so that I'm not washing all the myco off the roots. But what I will do, since I forgot to do that and I have no water handy, I'm going to just dribble water down one side of it. And avoid rinsing off the majority of the micro. So just to make sure I got substrate all between the roots, I'm just gonna shake it and kind of squeeze it and make the substrate fall between the roots a little bit more. And you can see that that like that really lowered the level, the volume, which means that there were a lot of air pockets in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the petioles here as I did with the other one, which is to kind of tie them together with plant Velcro. And it's not really for aesthetic purposes as it is for um, space and it's not going to harm the plant. So I think I have already a few pieces I'm gonna reuse. So I'm gonna do, I need a longer piece. So I don't wanna bend it too much. So that's what that looks like now. And I'm going to get my little air layer cup going. So what I did with my other plant, I did this with my heteroprospidon. I had a little cup of moss just around the base. And since it was, wasn't like saran wrap tied on it was a lot easier to keep it moist because i was just like as i'm watering the plant i'll just like water that little cup so i'm gonna try to do the same thing i don't have as much space because this is already pretty full so i'm going to cut this cup maybe to about here Ooh. All right. So cutting it to, let's see. Yeah, I think that should be okay. And then I'm gonna cut around like this. All right, so I'm left with this and I need to get it around the petiole. So I'm going to cut through here and the middle and then I need basically at the bottom here a circle where the plant is going to go and it has to be kind of big because it has to encompass all of this here. When I did this for the hetero, I remember it was a Tim Hortons cup and it was a lot easier to cut. So, <laughs> this was as best as I could do with the t other cup. So this is compostable plastic, the other cup Morton's cup, I could just cut a circle 
but this is really, really hard, but I think it'll work. Okay, that might do it. So, I'm just gonna put this around here. Just widening this and get around the stem. And that's what we have here. And I'm gonna fill this with moss to close this back up. If you want to like have it a snugger fit, you can just get like masking tape or something and hold that like that. Okay, so I have a piece of tape and I'm just gonna tape this side closed. Like that. And I'm just gonna position it so that where the moss goes will mostly cover all the nodes here. And when you do it with this kind of cup, it really only works with um, moss because there's such a big hole at the bottom. So if you were to fill that with, I don't know, pond or something like that, perlite, it would just fall out. So I'm not packing it too tight because I want to create a humid environment around that top part but not suffocate the aerial roots that are there. All right, so that's what we got here. You got the bottom rooting in pond mixture and then the top air layering in moss. The whole plant is gonna be in a high humidity greenhouse. So aerial roots are going to wanna grow anyway and then they're just gonna root well, I hope, in this little moss cup. And then when I'm ready to cut it, I can just chop that and even just like keep it in moss. If I wanted to, I would decide when the time comes. It looks a little bit silly with this plant because it's so close together. Like if you had a plant that was a climber and the internodes were a lot more spaced out, this would actually look like it would make a lot more sense. So like, let's say you had, oh, what did I do this with? I did this with a hetero. Um, you could do this with like a glorious, um, where you, if you wanted to chop the top off and you didn't want to disrupt the size of the growth and you wanted to make sure like the next leaf of that continued to be large then this would be something you could do before cutting the plant and get it with a nice uh, root system before you chop and then you probably won't get too much of a size reversion or minimal size reversion um, if you did it this way so yeah um, not the most elegant not elegant in any way whatsoever but um, this is how I'm going to root the two sections of this plant and when, while it's rooting I can still uh, fertilize the top part. So I'm going to get this also back in my tent. It's finally potted up and hopefully we get some growth from it soon. Alright guys, that is it for me today. I hope you had a relaxing time watching that video. Actually. Let me know if you're doing plant chores while you're watching this video, what plant chores are you doing? Because I am so curious. For me, normally when I'm watching plant content, I'm doing my makeup in the morning and that's like a good 45 minutes and just like I love to put a long video on and that will see me through to the end of my makeup routine. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious what you guys are all doing while this video is playing. Normally, I would have Huxley here to say goodbye, but as I said, he's not here today. So what I've done is I've drawn him from memory. <laughs> Here's Huxley. Oh wait. Here's Huxley. 
saying goodbye. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday, a really, really relaxing rest of your week. And you guys, spring is just around the corner. Can you smell it? Are the plants waking up? I can feel it. I am so excited for spring this year. I hope you have a really, really nice week this week. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.